Hey y'all, William did a Pungo Prairie. There were six of them out there in the field yesterday. A good number of fish have become stranded there due to tidal flooding earlier in the week. And those eagles have been having one heck of a feast. So tell me y'all, how you making out with the lockdown? I hope you're doing well. Thankfully, there appears to be a decline in the rapid rate of increase in the number of folks that are being infected by this little demon. And I've been praying hard. I know you have too, especially for peace and to the families of those that have lost their loves, the tragedy of life cut short, and prayers of thanksgiving for an even greater number of folks that have already recovered. We are going to get through this thing. We're going to get through it, I promise you. But for now, I have another camp video for you that hopefully will help you pass the time that you will enjoy. So if you want to take a little trip back to the mountains with Tally Girl and me, don't go nowhere because you don't want to miss this. And keep those prayers up, y'all. Tally Girl, oh my goodness. Camp's all broke down for another year. That was a long, hard day, wasn't it, baby? Breaking camp down, enjoying one last campfire here of the season. Got some turkey legs smoking here on a little Weber kettle smoker. Good fire and a Punga Prairie sunset. I cannot believe this weather. The 12th of January. Hey dog, it's been almost 70 degrees today. What a beautiful day to break camp. A little breeze, a lot of nice sunshine going on, dry things out good so we didn't have to worry about wrapping up a wet tent. God's been good to us these last three months up here in the mountains, hadn't he, Cali girl? Yeah, daddy. I've been having a big time. Yes, you have. <laughs> Kept us safe for all those storms chimney blowing out of the wood stove gotta head home back home to the pungo prairie tomorrow baby daddy do we have to <laughs> yeah little girl you have to daddy's got some business he has to take care of i gotta sell some boats so we can do this again sometime God's been good to us, hasn't he, baby? Huh? God been good to us up here these last three months? Yes, he has. Getting up so early. <laughs> Day going hot, baby. You know, I get to stay locked up in the jail again all day. Yeah, maybe not all day, baby. Maybe the Lord bring Daddy a deer this morning early. Joe, good night. You did have a good night.
still standing there. <laughs> That's my cap around the camp. I can't even load another shot. <sighs> that one was gonna grill up so nice and dead. It's all good though. Do it. Grow up and live another year. I got one more day. And that's as far as I got this morning <laughs> on the trail with the mule. Thanks to the latest little bit of wind we had going on here. Well, I'm just getting back from the nearly 60 mile round trip drive into Lexington to go to Lowe's there because I had to pick up a few things to try to avert the reoccurrence of a near tragic disaster like almost happened here in camp last night. And I'll tell you all about it here as I get to working on curing the problem. Come on. Throw a hole in each one of these stovepipe legs about there. See if I can create an anchor point. Put these little S hooks in there. And just twist that wire around that. We'll have to remove our water tank to get to the other side. Okay. There we go. That'll work. Now a lot of stoves will have a collar welded here that actually sticks up about maybe three quarters of an inch or so where you could screw that pipe from the side maybe three different points and anchor it into that stove. But this stove is not like that. It's just about flush and the, the ring is actually down inside. So my plan here is to take some of this 14 gauge wire create two anchor points one on either side 
wouldn't hurt to have three except that I don't have anywhere to anchor it on the third point. I have to deal with those two legs to go into. So we're going to anchor the cable here, run it down along the side of the stove pipe, and in through the thimble. And then we're going to put a couple of these hose clamps on it. Once we get inside, I might want to put one up here too to keep the wire tight to the stove and then adjust the tension and tighten it up by installing these turnbuckles. And hopefully it's going to keep that stove pipe secured down into that stove so we don't have a reoccurrence like we did last night. And truthfully, the wind was only forecast to be gusting up to 45, so they say. And we've been through a whole lot worse than that through these past 20-some years. I've been setting up this camp and this combination tent and stove. And we've been through 60, 70 mile an hour wind gusts and never had anything like that. And last night, it could have been tragic. over here Not sure it's exactly all right hook that right there and down here see how much wire we're going to need to get down this stove pipe right here we're just going to make us a nice loop here with a haywire twist Y'all know what a haywire twist is, right? I know if you're an offshore fisherman, you do. The way to get an even one is you try to twist the loop dead of the wire so much. Nice, even twist if you can, because that is where your strength is. And a nice, even twist. Okay, now we're going to finish it off with a nice little barrel wrap. Now, I don't know if I can do it with this heavy a gauge wire here, but what we used to do with the fishing wire you just kind of bend a little tag in it twist that wire back on itself and it should break off if not we'll use the pliers so this is a little softer wire than we would use for fishing and it might not do that see if that was fishing wire it would have been snapped in like two twists but we're just going to cut it now i got this hose clamp here thought it might help to secure our wire along the uh the chimney get our other one Slip it up through here. There we go. Slide it on down there. Make some adjustments here. Now we can go with our S hook. On down. Get this one. Put on down. We'll make the whole thing go a little bit smoother, maybe, huh? Keep that everything in place. Now I want to keep this right about there so I get good tension. I don't have that little gap, good tension on my wire. Now these are tapered pipes, so I can slide this down here a little ways before I start tightening it up. Alright, I don't have a end driver, nut driver, so I have to use this screwdriver. If we bring this loop here about midway on the second section of pipe, that'll give us probably a nice taper going off the sides of our stove where we'll get a good tension. So we're going to guess that that's going to be right. This time... We're going to turn our loop through the eye of our turnbuckle here. The next trick is to see if we can get it through that hole with all that extra stuff hanging out of it. Take another little piece of wire here. I kind of guesstimated the length from the S hook on the leg where we drilled our hole. And we're just going to make a twist on this one with that S hook. All right, we got that loop. Now what we want to do here is very important is to run our bolts or eye bolts all the way out from the body here of this turnbuckle because we want to have plenty of room to tension and tighten this wire up. So we want to give ourselves as much play as we can in the turnbuckle. We want to get them till they just barely come out of there then Start to thread them back in. See, like that? Okay. Now we'll just get it started. Okay. All right. Okay, we got the end that we twisted for our S hook. Put that right on our S hook and bring it up. Run it through our extended turnbuckle, like so, so we can get the proper 
length, crimp it right there. And then we can crimp it over right there in our turnbuckle like so. And that way, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to do our haywire. Actually, I don't need all this extra. I'm going to cut some of that off. Make it even easier. All right, now we got that little haywire to make right there. Just barely started here. That's a reverse thread. That's the way these things work. We should have just enough slack to reach our S hook. And we can tighten up our turnbuckle. I want to try to keep equal tension so we're pulling down with the same tension on both sides. Now I'm going to tell you all something. If that wind blows that pipe out of here now, I'm going home and I ain't never coming back. I'm taking Tally Girl with me. Alright, it's nice and secure at the top. At least it appears to be. I can put a little bit more tension on that left hand wire. So I can hear a lot of y'all saying right now, Hey Dixon, why don't you just put a smoke detector in the tent? That's a good point. But if I put a smoke detector in this tent, it'd be going off every time I open the door to put a stick of wood in the stove. All right, I put one more hose clamp here on the pipe to keep the wire tight to the pipe so it's not coming off at an angle. Because when that wind gets really howling, I don't want it to saw a groove in my silicone uh, stovepipe thimble here. It ain't tight as a banjo string. Maybe a bass fiddle. But it's tight enough to keep that pipe from lifting off of there, I hope. That girl, how about some of Nephew Justin's Church Point Fried Oysters? Fresh from the Lynn Haven River. Here's a little oyster farm. Nice panko breadcrumbs going on. Perfect color. All right, perfect. That right there is oyster heaven. Some of that skillet cornbread. And these oysters. Oh my goodness. This is going to be one amazing meal here alongside Bratton's Run. Set it all right over here. Got some melted butter. A little extra candlelight. Some hot sauce. And we are ready to eat. So here's what happened. Tally had awakened me from sound sleep as she leaped upon my cot, bounding on top and over me. What I hadn't realized or heard in that instant was the crashing down of the stovepipe, which had scared the pajeebies out of her. She had been sleeping on the other cot beside the stove. I just cuddled her and tried to drift back to sleep. After some time, I got up to shake the dew off my lily. It was then I nearly tripped over the stovepipe. At the same instant, seeing the fire burning, looking straight down into the top of the stove through the hole where the pipe belonged. How could the tent not be full of smoke? How were the flames not shooting up through the top of the stove, given now the abundant oxygen supply? More than 20 minutes had passed since Tally Girl leaped on top of me. I was awestruck. What I was witnessing was impossible. It just couldn't be. There was just no way there could be no smoke, much less no raging fire in the tent. I trembled as I realized an angel had been dispatched to camp to watch over us, keeping the fire and smoke in check until I became aware of the situation. I put the pipe back into the stove and laid back down on my cot beside Tally. Ten minutes later, another heavy wind gust lifted the pipe again, sending it crashing down. In the instant it took me to spring up from my bed and shove the pipe back into the stove, the tent completely filled with smoke. It took another ten minutes with the door wide open to clear it out. I have not even the slightest doubt there was an angel among us in camp. Maybe the Lord was just looking out for Tally Girl and trying to get a message through to me.
Looks like winter has come to Bratton's Run. Before we could even get the coffee finished perking. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a snowy Tuesday morning here in the tally girl. What is that, baby? <laughs> Eating the snow? We should have covered the wood pile. Fire feel good, Tally girl. Yes, it does. Glad we got that stovepipe fixed, secured. Come here, baby. You come over here by the fire. Come on. Come on over here by the fire. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. That fire feels good this morning, Daddy. Get the snow dried off on me. See what the Lord has to say this morning. Oh, tell you girl, this coffee is good this morning, baby. I wouldn't know, Daddy. You don't let me drink coffee. <laughs> Look at you over there. Stretch out on your cot by the stove. Yeah, Daddy, it feels good in here. It's too cold out there in that snow. Yeah, she's really coming down out there, Tally girl. Supposed to snow heavy. They say it for the next three or four hours anyway. What is today? January 7th? Already. Huh. It's hard to believe it goes by that quick. What did I write here? 2013. 2013, that's seven years ago. 10 degrees this morning on the Pungo Prairie. Kitchen sink faucet froze up. <laughs> I guess it was. 10 degrees. That's cold at home, Tally girl. Yeah, Daddy, I'm glad we're here in the mountains by the wood stove where it's 30. <laughs> 28 or 30. It is impossible to praise or thank me too much. As it is written, I inhabit the praises of my people. I reckon that's Psalm 22, verse 3.
Oh yeah, they're looking good. Tally girl, how about some nice homemade peanut butter cookies for dessert tonight, huh? Right in the oven in our cake pan since we don't have a cookie sheet. Oh yeah! Let's see if we get these out of here. Let me finish cooling on this little cooling rack here. These are gonna go good for dessert tonight. That's what I'm talking about. Homemade peanut butter cookies. All right, let's plate these babies up right here. All right, our potatoes should be done. It's just like unwrapping a Christmas present, Tally Dog. This baked potato. <laughs> this is good as a Christmas present. Get it all nice and pushed open. You don't ever want to slice it. You always want to push it. There you go. And you can drizzle all that nice butter in there. One of our nice pork steaks. And a nice cup of our black eyed peas from New Year's Day. What do you think, Tally girl? Does this look good? Where are you at? Come here, baby. Huh? Did we have us a good day? Yes, we did. We had us a good day. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day in your mountains. This snowy day where we got to see the winter make its debut here along Brighton's Run. Just something so magical about snow in the mountains, a little brown dog, and living in a tent. Pray now that you'll just bless this food and nourish our bodies and strengthen us for a life in thee. And we'll have a good evening, a restful evening, sitting by the campfire, enjoying just your majestic night under the stars in this snow. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. So what do you think, Cal? You ready for some pork steak? Yeah, Daddy, I'm always ready for pork steak. Girl, that was a good supper, wasn't it, baby? <laughs> yeah. You slept most of the day while it was snowing. But then once it quit, you were out there running around. Let me tell you something, little dog. You better not be on my bunk. Little wet doggy feet. <laughs> I'm watching you in there. Wish I could teach you how to do dishes. <laughs> yes, sir. I thought the girls in camp were supposed to do dishes. Another season is come and gone. One more trip around the sun. More great stories written down to tell again another day. Little brown dog has had a big time. She just loves it here so much running these ridges and creek bottoms until she nearly drops. Hunting mice and chasing birds, one feisty little pup she is. Talk about stubborn too. Guess that makes her a lot like me. No wonder she's my best girl. Time to break camp and head back home. Makes it kind of bittersweet. Got lots of projects need tending to. And it'll soon be time to get the garden in. The Lord's been good to Tally Girl and me, but that night he sent our camp angel in. That night will go down in history. Another campfire tale, surely to be told again. <laughs>